Hello, welcome back. My name is Massey, and today I want to discuss what to me is perhaps the most important lecture for your verbal preparation, whether you are preparing for CAT or you are preparing for GMAT or you are preparing for any other competitive test. If any test that you are preparing for has a verbal or an English section, what I am going to tell you today is perhaps the single most important thing you can do. And here is the thing, if you do what I will ask you to do, chances are you really do not need any other preparation. You might need it for strategies and all that, but to be honest you do not. It is up to you, but if you want to do. And if you do not do properly what I will ask you to do, then also all your other things that you will do for your prep, the strategies, the techniques, the tips, attending classes and all that, they will not take you as far as you would go if you do what I will ask you to do. So as the name suggests, the one thing, is there one single thing I can do to become really, really good in the verbal section? And the answer is yes. And that one thing will also make you good at English. Forget the verbal section, forget competitive tests, forget all this. If you want to become good at English, which automatically means that you will become good in the verbal section. If you be want to become very good in English, this is the best thing you can do. And that is, some of you would have already guessed, you start reading. Just start reading. Right now, it is not important what you read. I am specifically referring to the people or talking to the people who have not read in life or who only read to pass exams and so on. They do not read books and maybe newspapers, magazines, they just browse through them and so on. I am talking to such people. You, It does not matter right now what you read. What matters right now is that you read. You just start reading. How much? I do not know. As much as you can. The amount it will benefit you is not funny. Believe me, I am emphasizing it again and again. I will justify it also. But in brief, start reading. Okay. Now, what to read is a later issue. But right now, you need to get into the habit of reading. You need to get into the groove. I have written a couple of posts on this whose link we will provide in the info section below. Uh, so you can read them, they will be much more detailed than this video. And um, but, but the thing is that you need to start doing this. Okay. So right now, do not bother about what to read. Right now, just read whatever it is that you would love to read. One easy test to figure out what I should read is what kind of movies do I like? What are the kind of movies, if I can categorize them into a genre, what kind of movies do I want to go to again and again with uh, belonging to which genre? Okay? Do I like horror movies? Do I like murder mysteries? Do I like love stories? Whatever it is, go to those kind of books initially so that you get into the habit. The first step to become good at this and to develop, the first step is to make this into a habit. Okay? And to do this, it is not important what you read initially. To do this, you just need to do it. You need to read as much as you can. Okay? I have recommended some books for you, which is only a suggestion, but it's again in the second post and the links would be there below. Okay? So you start reading. Now let me justify what do I mean by you need to start reading. <clears throat> in the verbal section, you have RC and you have grammar, you have vocabulary and you have uh, verbal reasoning. Okay? Cat, out of 34 questions, 24 are from RC alone. CAT has not been asking grammar in the past few years, vocabulary has not been asking in the past few years and you can say that para jumbles and summary questions belong to either reasoning, I would say they belong to the reading section. Okay? So, it is just a, to me this is just a subset of RC, but even if you think that it belongs here, 
still what I am going to say will be relevant. Okay, grammar uh, in GMAT, RC is one section, grammar is one section, critical reasoning is another section. All right. In other exams, you have a combination of these things, either all of them or few of them. But anyway, this is roughly what the verbal section consists of. Okay. Reading comprehension, I do not have to justify this. This is reading comprehension, meaning trying to understand what I read. So, this is automatically uh, relevant to reading, meaning you need to be good at reading to be good at this. Okay, grammar. Most people I know who are able to get answers right in grammar are not the ones who attend grammar classes again and again or go through Ren and Martin and all that. They do fine, but most people who do well in grammar are those for whom it comes instinctively. Now, what is the meaning of it comes instinctively? Literally, it is not true. You can't have grammar as an instinct. Well, for Indians at least or people for whom English is not their first language, it comes not because of talking because we do not talk in English all the time. We talk in our own mother tongues. So, for us, it comes through reading. Again, reading starts playing a role. Okay. <clears throat> Vocabulary, well, it is obvious. Either you cram up words, which is not a very effective and an efficient way to do it because most people will forget. If you have a photographic memory, what is known as eidetic, if you have that, then it is damn okay. But then otherwise, you will have to do other things. Most important is reading. Why? Because when you are reading something and there is a word you do not understand, you do one of the two things. Either you go to a dictionary or you try to find the meaning contextually. Both of these things help you build your vocab and both of these come from where? Well, you came across this word where? You came across this word when you were reading something. Okay? Reasoning, if I very briefly summarize it, is that whenever you, whenever anyone tries to make some claims, then this person needs to give reasons to support those claims. All right. Now, if you read good stuff, which is not very important right now, as I told you, right now the objective is start reading. But when you go to more advanced stuff, which we will talk about later in a later video, and it is there in the post, when you read non-fiction advanced stuff, good stuff, most of the non-fiction stuff, unless it is a history thing or whatever, even history quite a bit, most of them are making some claims and most of them are giving facts or figures or data to support those claims because without data, without support, those claims are just opinions and they are completely irrelevant in case you want to understand the reasons why is this person making that claim. So, when you read and when you start following the train of thought of the author, you are automatically learning the techniques that make a good, let us say, reasoning person versus a bad reasoning person. Okay? So, again, you are being helped in this. Okay? So, no matter which area you look at, if you start reading and you read consciously, you, meaning you read consciously to improve each one of these traits. If you read with that intention, if you read properly, if you read every day, you apply all the techniques which are there in my uh, reading comprehension lectures, you will automatically become good at it. And as I told you, the reverse is equal to meaning if you do not read, you can believe me attend as many lectures as you want of these things, keep repeating them, do thousands of passages. If you do not read, this will not become there where you need it to be. Now, if you do thousands of passages, I need to little bit correct myself. Uh, and if you start becoming good, you may say, no, no, you are wrong. I be well, if you read thousands of passages, you are anyway reading. Okay? So, that is, that's, uh, I, I take back my words a little bit. But you need to read to become good at these things. 